Welcome to episode 46. We are in our Understanding Spiritual Gifts series, um, and today we're going to be talking about prophecy. Come on. Um, I'm excited about this one. Uh, It's something that you and I have kind of done a deep dive in over the last couple of years. I read a lot of really great books um, about this topic, and um, so I'm excited to dive in. Yeah, I would say prophecy is, I think, one of the most powerful... Yeah, spiritual gifts. Um, and when I say powerful, I, I'm saying that on a practical level. Correct. But I think prophecy. You know, we covered last week a little bit of, especially in the context of like church. We walked through First Corinthians 14, where Paul's kind of comparing the effectiveness of prophecy mm-hmm. versus tongues, and obviously there is a place for tongues and and a purpose in it, um, but prophecy is very practical yeah so yeah. super super excited to dig into that uh, i feel like the lord like you said has really stretched our understanding mm-hmm. and and even i would say in the last couple of years been praying a lot more for it yes absolutely because uh, as you see that gift begin to to manifest in the context of of ministry man it's just super helpful it we've had some really yeah. prophetic words spoken over us we've spoken prophetic words over one another that have just been super impactful yeah. and so um yeah really really coming from a skeptical non spirit filled you know uh environment as mm-hmm. as some people say uh just being open to gifts which is what we've been encouraging mm-hmm. through through this whole series um, being open to more of the spirit, more of his uh, presence in your ministry, in your life, in your marriage, in your family, in your church, yeah. uh, for the sake of just power manifestation. It's it's good. It's beautiful. So yeah. I'm going to start us off with a working definition from Understanding Spiritual Gifts by Sam Storms. Um, he defines it like this. After doing some really, really deep work on the word like revelation yeah. in, in scripture, he says he says it like this. Prophecy is speaking forth in merely human words, something the Holy Spirit has sovereignly revealed to a believer. Prophecy, therefore, is not based on a hunch, a supposition, an inference, an educated guess, or even on sanctified wisdom. Mm. Prophecy is not based on personal insight, intuition, or illumination. Prophecy is a human report of a divine revelation. This is what distinguishing prophecy what distinguishes prophecy from teaching. Hmm. Teaching is always based on the text of scripture. Prophecy is always based on divine revelation. It's really good. So I love that um, definition because it helps really us try to wrap our heads around what is prophecy. Is it, you know, just expounding on scripture? Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about like what how to how to weigh prophetic words because yeah. the scripture says a lot about that that we don't turn our brains off and just listen to everything that someone calls a prophetic word over us but mm-hmm. this is a great way for us to understand this is a human interpreting a divine revelation yeah for someone yeah for the sake which, of which can be very yeah. dangerous right it, it's, like you it, might yes you might be you might be hearing this and saying like <laughs> wow does that even happen and so like you know we've we've addressed mm-hmm. the kind of cessationalist versus continualist mm-hmm, mm-hmm. type views that we've been talking about. Um, we have expressed where we land on that, that we do believe that tongues and prophecy and healing and all of the spiritual gifts mm-hmm. are still you know, active today. Um, opponents of that view talk about you know, the verses that say prophecy will cease, tongues will cease, but when the fullness is revealed, you'll see him face to face. For now we see dimly, you know, mm-hmm. those, those types of, of passages that they've interpreted as the word, which, right. you know, again, I, I gave my opinion in the beginning of, of kind of um, an opposition to that, mm-hmm. where I think it's talking about the second coming of Christ, that yeah. when, when we see the perfect Jesus face to face when he returns, no spiritual gifts will be needed. Ministry is over when right. Christ returns, because right. all things are, are complete. We're still in the age of needing ministry to happen. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Because he also says wisdom is going to mm-hmm. cease in mm-hmm. that same thing. It's like, do we not have wisdom anymore? But I, I will say this, there is a, a huge caution. The yes. reason I brought that back up is when you have a human being saying, I have a divine revelation from God, and this is for his people... Well, we've got to steward that, sure, right? Sure, sure. Because well, we'll, you've we'll, had a lot of yeah. really, you know, weird 
prophets, mm-hmm. as as you will, um, that have started cults, that have started false religions, that, you know, there's a ton percent. of false teaching and yes. all of that. So mm-hmm. the reason we wanted to talk about that here is talk about the power and practicality in ministry, what it's actually used for, and then we say how to weigh that, right, with understanding was it actually revelation? Yep. Because, you know, a lot of people, especially on the cessationalist kind of side, the ones who believe that these gifts are not here anymore, mm-hmm. they don't believe that God is still revealing truth to the to the world. Right. Meaning, once the scriptures were done, all that God had to say, he said, mm-hmm. and that he's not kind of not speaking anymore, mm-hmm. um, which I think that's also dangerous too, because clearly, you know, when we walk in the spirit, when we're having discernment, which we'll even talk about some of that in in later episodes. Um, What does that look like? And how do we biblically stay in line with God's word? And then how do we actually use this practically? So this is is a fun conversation. It's so great. So in order to kind of answer what the cessationalist view would be, which is God doesn't do that anymore, let's actually go to the scriptures. So you started with 1 Corinthians 14 last time, where it talks about tongues. Will you repeat the scripture where it mentions prophecy yeah. in 1 Corinthians 14? We'll start there, and then I want to read a couple too, or, right. or mention references for you. Yeah. While I'm looking that up, you want to yeah, set, let me go set ahead. it up? Um, so the question is, do we believe that prophecy still has a place today? Right. So Paul actually encouraged Timothy... Um, when he Timothy was starting his ministry to draw upon the prophecy spoke, spoken over him as a way to wage the good warfare. And he mentions that in 1 Timothy 1.18. And then again in 1 Timothy 4.14, he urged him not to neglect the gift that he was given to him by prophecy yep. when the council of the elders had laid hands on him. Yep. So Paul's actually encouraging Timothy, like, this is a good thing for you and it's gonna it's going to benefit you as you start your ministry. Huh. 100%. So that Paul's yeah. instructing his disciple as he's starting his own churches. Yeah. So First Corinthians 14, I got it pulled up now. Um, and this is the same scriptures I read in the tongues mm-hmm. one, because what he was doing was, is the context was in the church. How do we build one mm-hmm. another up? How do we encourage? How do we, how do we speak to mm-hmm. one another with these, you know, prophetic words mm-hmm. and also these uh, tongues, yeah. right? And so, you know, again, he says, pursue love, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you might prophesy. Yep. So I wanted to repeat that because he's, he's actually elevating prophecy in the context of corporate gatherings, like a church service mm-hmm. as even higher, you know, than some of these because they're so practical, because they're so powerful, because they are edifying to, right. to the church, because they're bringing fresh revelation of Jesus to the church, whether that's through an interpretation of scripture, whether that's through just a a word of knowledge, which we'll talk some about, whether that's through uh, just preaching, teaching in general. Because I think prophecy, you know, to Sam's point, preaching isn't the same as prophecy, but they do flow in and out a lot of times where a, a preacher or a teacher with prophetic gifts at the same time can be getting fresh revelation, fresh understanding, fresh interpretation of things where it's For a specific, revealing specific person or a situation. revealing yep. deeper mm-hmm. truth mm-hmm. of the passage that you're teaching through or mm-hmm. or even an understanding that is helpful for somebody listening to that yep. that when all of a sudden wow that prophetic word just unlocked some truth of that right. passage or that message you right. know to to the human that's listening. Um And then he goes on, verse 2, he says, For the one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God. No one understands him, for he utters mysteries in the Spirit. But on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and the encouragement and consolation. So you see here that Paul is saying practically when you prophesy, you're speaking to people. Right. When you're praying in tongues, you're speaking to God. Right when you're speaking prophetic words, it's for people, and the specific thing was for their upbuilding. Yeah. Is what he so, says. so, so practically, the purpose of prophecy would be to edify, mm-hmm. to encourage, yep. and to console. Yep. So those are the practical purposes 100%. of why God would give the gift of prophecy and why it's so powerful in people's lives. Yep. Because when one human has a divine revelation from God specifically about 
the inner workings of another human or their specific situation that they should know nothing about, yep. and they speak that to them in faith, what does that say to that human? It says, God sees you. That's right. It is powerful. Yep. It says, you are not alone. The creator God of the universe is talking to you. That's right. That's it's right. personal. Yeah, and I, I, Paul actually talks about that. So verse 6, he says, Now, brothers, if I come to you speaking in a tongue, how will I benefit you unless I bring some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Mm-hmm. So he uses a lot mm-hmm. of those words mm-hmm. that we're using. He says, If even lifeless instruments such as a flute or a harp do not have distinct notes, how will anyone uh, know what is played? And so he's talking about tongues of like how kind sure. of impractical they would be because in a gathering, yep. even like mm-hmm. instruments they have a purpose right they're not to just be used without without any kind of purpose and so he says so with you if with your tongue you utter the speech of you know intelligence and all these things then then you're you're not helping right right you're not you're not edifying you're not building up you're not using the gifts for what they're actually used for um, and then he talks about you know just the the beauty of the manifestation of the spirit in the context of prophecy, because you're striving at that point, he says in verse 12 to um, excel in building up of the church, which again, he uses that building up, building up, building up over and over and over again for, for what it's for. Correct. And then, yeah. So I think we've broken down kind of the, the main purposes. Of, yeah. So I want to, I want to ask, so we, we now understand like who this is for and what's its purpose. Now I want to ask, who can prophesy? Yeah. Does everyone get this gift? Yeah, it's funny. I got a, um, I actually got a random email uh, maybe last week or the week before that. Somebody just inquiring about our church. They probably mm-hmm. looked us up online and they asked a real specific question of like, hey, do you believe in modern day prophets? Oh, that's one of my lists too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can talk about both at the same time yeah, right like, now. Of like, yeah. do, you, do you believe in mm-hmm. modern day prophets? Mm-hmm. And, and it's a pretty loaded question. Sure. Like it's like, you know, and my response was like, hey, let's have a conversation because mm-hmm. like the semantics matter mm-hmm. of what are you actually saying mm-hmm. and what do you mean by prophet and what do you mean by, because there's a difference in a prophet and prophecy right old testament prophet versus modern day prophecy yeah and or like a prophetic gift right right? so are Mm -hmm. we talking about the spiritual gift of prophecy Mm -hmm. are we talking about a prophet of old or are we talking about you know does god call out specific you know because there are pastors today that would call themselves prophets Mm -hmm. even today Mm -hmm. um i don't love that language Mm -hmm. um i'm not dogmatic on it but it it does put me in kind of an uncomfortable scenario. Because mm-hmm. if you're claiming to be a prophet, that is a specific man or woman called out by God for a specific purpose with, yes, prophetic gifts, but there's a real specific assignment. You right, know, they and, had an And a special yeah. anointing mm-hmm. and a special mm-hmm. um, versus the body of Christ just being empowered by the Spirit with prophetic gifts, which again is just a revelation for the benefit of edifying someone else, right? right. Knowledge or wisdom or teaching or preaching, how prophecy can intertwine with all of those for the edification mm-hmm. and just a powerful presence to your point of like, wow, God was in that, yes. right? That the Spirit of God came with a supernatural power behind those words that mm-hmm. that person was speaking to supernaturally edify and, and lift up. Correct. So, yeah. Yeah. So when you get into like modern day prophets, it's like, man, that's that that's a little iffy for me. And, right. and just even a, a beware, because you also have other scriptures that even talk about beware of certain titles, you know, yeah. being called a teacher, being called father, being called, you know, because Christ is the high priest. God right. is the prophet, priest, and king. We are now in him. And so there definitely was a shift in the new covenant now the church is filled with the spirit so there there have been some practices that have shifted yes. in how these manifest right mm-hmm. Um, where it wasn't just the kings who had a specific and the prophets who had a specific and the apostles who had specific you know things mm-hmm. now you have this general uh, manifestation of the spirit through the indwelling of the spirit in all believers where you know you see Paul explain that you know in in that indwelling he's he, the Holy Spirit, is mm-hmm. distributing gifts for different reasons at different times for different purposes and, and so on. And mm-hmm. so that's where the nuance always gets a little 
muddy. And, and again, we say, let's just steward that. Let's mm-hmm. be open handed about it. Let's not be super dogmatic because, you know, you can go all over the place if you're not careful. Sure. But the point is that God is a good God who wants to give us gifts yeah. that build up one another and equip us for the work of ministry. And so in this, Paul says, eagerly desire the gifts and ask for them. Um, So I think the start of do I have the gift of prophecy is have I asked for it? It's good. Um, It's really good. And are you open to if the spirit would choose to move in that way, do you want to be used? Yeah. Um, by God in order to build other people up. This is nothing that comes from any of us, yeah, not just a like, you know, this person has it because they're more equipped or more talented or they know more scripture or it is none of that. It's mm-hmm. literally a work of the spirit for building someone else up, for yeah, edifying them, for comfort. Yeah. Um, and so when we gather, are we going into the gathering say, saying, Lord, do you have a word for someone today? Yeah. Do you, will you use me in that way Yeah. in your quiet space? For me, a lot of times I, I get words for people or know that I'm just supposed to pray into something and maybe it'll be revealed to me when I'm on a run. So like, are we creating the openness and the space for this in our lives to say, God, if you want to use me in this way, I want it. Yeah. I was thinking about something as you were talking and this, and this might be uh, clarifying and also helpful and practical because depending on where you land with how God speaks Mm. or even answering the question, does God still speak? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Does he audibly speak? Does he only speak through his word? Can he give words as like, you know, you said, Mm -hmm. when I'm on a run, I get a word. Well, what does that mean to the listener who has no idea what that means? Because they might say, I've never heard a word from the Lord, mm-hmm. or was that a memory verse that you just remembered? And so mm-hmm. God was speaking in and through that. Uh, you even see visions and pictures mm-hmm. or someone's name or like we, we've all had, you know, those kinds of mm-hmm. things. So I think it'd be helpful just to even say, Hey, how do we, how do we hear from God? When we say that yeah. when, when, when you're saying ask for a word for someone, we really need to get into like what is what does that look like? Yeah. And so I wanted to share something just real quick. I, I've done this with students in, in the past as we've kind of had, you know, little small like breakouts and teachings on how do I hear from God? Mm-hmm. Clearly the number one reason or not the number one reason, the the number one source of hearing from the word or from the Lord is the word. Absolutely. The Bible, the scripture, the canonization that we have yep. of God's word, right? Mm-hmm. So when you read your Bible, you are hearing God speak, mm-hmm. right? So clearly. Um, and then we'll talk about later on how to weigh all of these words or thoughts or pictures or visions or whatever to God's word. He's given that as a guardrails of how do we actually go to that. So yeah. number one, God speaks through his word, but then God does also speak. Yeah. Uh, may not be audible, but then even when you hear that, so this this is the exercise that, that I've done before, and I've had people literally close your eyes, and I always say, um, envision your front door. So maybe you're listening to this right now, and if you want to practice, that's cool. Close your eyes for a second and literally envision your front door. Well, when you do that for a minute, you literally see it. Mm-hmm. Like you see the colors, you see the textures, you see that, you know, broken you know, piece of brick on the side, mm-hmm. you, you know, the, the imperfections, the fingerprints, the scratches, the, <laughs> the, the, the dead plant that's mm-hmm. over there in the corner mm-hmm. or the little bee hive thing that has fallen over and has like been there for years, you know, all those things. Like, so, so my point is, is you are seeing something mm-hmm. with your eyes closed, right? That's a vision. So that's an easy way to say like, Hey, when God speaks through pictures, can he, in my mind, let me see something mm-hmm. that's super helpful. Same thing on hearing. So that's visually, you can see things with your eyes closed, sure. right? That's the, so, so that, that takes the mystery out of visions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Of like, no, it's just in your mind, your brain picture. can yeah. see things with your eyes closed. Well, then in perfect silence too, in your head, I always say, okay, close your eyes again. Say your name in your head three times, your full name. And so if you close your eyes, be quiet for a minute, in your head, say your full name. You literally hear it. Mm-hmm. Like there, there is a yeah. voice in your head saying your name. You can actually hear it. 
that's sometimes what it feels like to hear from from the Lord. And sometimes it is a scripture that you've read that, you know, it says the word literally abides in you. And sometimes the spirit will recall some of those truths yep. of like, hey, here's a verse for that person. Yep. So when you go into a, a ministry opportunity or a coffee date with a friend and you're praying Lord, give me a word for them. I want to encourage them. Yep. And I don't want it to just be worldly wisdom that I'm sharing off the no. top of my dome. Yeah. Would you give me something? Let me see something. Let me hear something. And then let me, in faith, present it to them. Yes. And it's going to resonate so much with their soul. And then the Spirit of God, if they're a Christian that's in them, is going to confirm that that was from God. Right. right? And so we can give some practical examples of that. But I, th- I thought that would be helpful. Just like, how do you hear from God? How do you see certain pictures or visions and and kind of demystify that because it's really not that hard because we do that all the time. Totally. But then like you said, asking for those things. And then the next step I think that's really hard is are we brave enough to share them? That's what I was going to say Because sometimes it's yes. weird. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll give an example in a minute. But anything you wanted to add to that? No, that was it. I think the the thing is like if we're asking for these these gifts from God and we hear something or see something – are we then bold enough to say it? Yeah. We're not always going to be right. Yeah, yeah. But there's no harm if it is, we're going to run through the filters here in just a minute, but is it encouraging? Yeah. Does it build them up? Yeah. Like if you run it through the biblical filters of what prophecy should do, does yeah. it edify? Um, does it console? You know, all of those things. Yep. And it does. What's the harm in saying, hey, I'm hearing this. That's really good. I'm, uh, this is, this is just something that I'm sensing. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I'm going to put that to you yep. to take to the Lord and pray over it. But it's in faith saying, God, I've asked you for this. So now I'm in a, I'm in a practice. Yeah. Yeah. And so well, I think the more you do that, the more you're encouraged. And this is, this is, these are ways that God is speaking to mm-hmm. me. So I'm going to continue to in faith lay this before the people in front of me. Yeah, yeah. And I think more and more you become comfortable with God does speak 100%, a lot, 100%. a lot more than we probably even realize because we're not creating space we're not, for it yeah, or asking, asking for it. Yeah. And then we're not creating space. And then we're, the the more time you spend with the Lord too, it's like, do you even know his voice? Right. You know? And so again, we could talk about prayer. We could talk about the word. Mm-hmm. We could talk about silence and solitude, fasting. I mean, all of those are flexing your intimacy with God and knowing his voice when he speaks, when yeah. he moves, when he reveals and things like yeah. that. Well, and I'll say after all these years of asking God for it, practicing it, I still, every time I question, like, sure. should I say that to them? Yep. Like, yep. you know, should I say, I saw a picture of you, yeah, you know? Yeah. And I was running and your face popped in my mouth. It's like, <laughs> wow, you're a creeper. Awesome. Right? Yeah. You know, but the more I do it, the more I, I, I realize every single time God affirms, I am speaking, I am moving. They did need to hear from just another human that, at very base level, somebody's thinking about them and praying for them. That's good. Like I took you before the Lord today because your face popped into my mind, yeah. you yeah. know? And so yeah. those kind of things, I think, and those are not super specific. Sometimes prophetic words are super specific. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about and that. And that's, that's beautiful. But yeah. um, let's talk about the ABCs for a second. Yeah. Cause I think that's how do we weigh super, them? How super do we weigh easy. the words? So when you are in that posture where you're saying, God, give me a word mm-hmm. or like you're, you're asking for it, which again, that's step one. Like, are you even asking for God to give you these yep. gifts, earnestly des- desiring these things? Um, I love in How to Hear from God from um, Pete Gregg. Pete Gregg. Uh, he also has How to Pray, which is a great, great book as well. Mm-hmm. But the How to Hear from God, he gives kind of some basic ABCs mm-hmm. of how to weigh these words. How do I know this was from God? And here's kind of a simple, like basic elementary way to do this. He talks about A, B, C. Number one, is it affirming? Is the word that I feel like I'm supposed to share, is it affirming to that person? Meaning, yeah. is, it in, is it encouraging? Is it uplifting? Right? The B is, is it biblical? Right? Does Does the word that I feel like God gave me line up with scripture yep. example of that never would it be from god for this word that you have to be to tell someone to hey god told me you're supposed to sin mm-hmm. or whatever that looks like or that you're supposed to do something that's not in line with god's right biblical word yep. or something so is it affirming is it biblical is it christ-like that's the right. c if it's affirming if it's biblical and it's christ-like 
meaning could I imagine Jesus saying this? Mm -hmm. Does it feel like something Jesus would say to them if they were standing Mm -hmm. right here? Mm -hmm. So if it affirms them, if it's biblically in line and it feels like something Jesus would say, you have nothing to lose. Right. Right. It may not be from God, but it's affirming them. Mm -hmm. It's biblical and it feels like Jesus would say it. Right. right? And then they get to weigh it against those same things. A hundred percent. And so that's how to give a word. And then the receiving would be the same. Yeah. Did that affirm me or did that feel really cutting and, and shameful? Mm -hmm. Um, Did that feel biblical? Is it in line with, Mm -hmm. with God's word Mm -hmm. and what he says about me? Right. Does it, did it feel like Jesus was talking to me or did it feel like, you know, a a bitter friend was talking to me? And we've, we've gotten some really negative quote unquote, prophetic words from people yep. which are very easy to brush off yep. when you're like mm, nope that is not that is not from the lord because yep. it did not line up with any of that's these right. things and it is not the purpose and the intent that's right of prophecy yeah so yeah and i think there's just a, a practical thing too and and man i feel like we could do like five episodes yes. on this we only, <laughs> we're already we only out of time have a few more minutes <laughs> but when when you begin to listen and ask and then have the boldness mm-hmm. to share Run it through the ABCs. That's a great kind of beginner spot. Mm-hmm. But then also like thinking through um, the way you say it. Um, a lot of times when you get more comfortable with like when God is just speaking all the time mm-hmm. and you've got a bunch of words for people, a lot of times you can almost get overly confident and then start saying, thus say the Lord. Yeah. Like the Lord said, the, the Lord, Lord said, said, the Lord said. Yeah. Um, I love the disclaimer when you're sharing, hey, I feel like. The, the Lord, Lord pressed saying, something yeah. on me. Mm-hmm. I want to be faithful to share it with you, mm-hmm. but I don't want you to take my words as God's word. Now, sometimes exactly. it is so clear. And like again, when you're a little more mature and just really know this is from the Lord, that, that's a little different. But as you're beginning to kind of lean into mm-hmm. prophecy maybe for the first time or and this I is good say for anybody even for mature this is for anybody yeah like let's like, be let's like, be humble don't yeah. say thus saith the Lord yes yes Do, hey I feel like God said this I'm being obedient to share it with you but take it before yes. the Lord yes. and and so as you're weighing those weigh it with the Bible yep. uh, I love they say weigh it with even trusted friends yes and then weigh it with your spirit. The Holy Spirit of God is in you, right? And if it was from God, then your spirit will confirm with His spirit that that was of God, right? Just like how your the Spirit of God confirms with your spirit that you are a child of God, right? Like there is there's communion in the Holy Spirit and your spirit, right? And so always weigh it for the Spirit. Like Lord, was that for me? Was that from you? Weigh it with the word. Was it biblical? And then if you're still confused, man, have some trusted friends who have like the gift of discernment Mm -hmm. that, hey, present it. Hey, this word was shared to me. I'm having a hard time. Like it felt affirming. It felt biblical. It it felt like Jesus could have said it, but I'm not really sure what to do with it. Let other people into that and and then weigh that. Well, and you know, in, in, in that a lot of times um, in the gathering, when people would speak prophetically, they would pause and then the people would weigh the words. Yeah. Like there is a an order and a process For to sure. weighing prophecy 100%. in the gathering. And and so it is 100%. very important that we, you know, we don't turn off our brains in this and receive everything as gospel truth. That's so right. We have yep. to lay it before the Lord. Yeah. And then people get overly excited too, where it's always like, you know, you, it's not just always a word too. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there are some people that are just like uber saved and like everything's like God <laughs> speaking all the time. And it's like, and, and there are people that are super prophetically gifted. So I'm not, I'm not knocking that at all, but I, I do think it's one of those things of like, be intentional to be intimate mm-hmm. with the Lord, be in a posture of listening, have the faith and boldness to share, but always weigh it first before you share it. Always weigh it when you receive it. Mm-hmm. Make sure that it's affirming, it's biblical, it's Christ-like. Make sure that it lines up and then and then really just sit with it. And, and sometimes it's random, sometimes it's good, but and, and sometimes it doesn't make sense right now, but then like weeks later it does it, or yeah. years later it does. Yep. But, you know, again... If you have guardrails, you have nothing to lose, kind of right. kind of trying it. so Awesome. Will you pray us out? Love to. Father, we love you. Thank you for being a God who speaks. Holy Spirit, would you give us discernment and wisdom? Um, give us boldness to um, earnestly desire uh, these gifts. And Lord, would you continue to speak and give us encouraging words as we minister to others? Give us uh, wisdom to weigh those mm-hmm. words um, and to make sure that they are clearly from you. Um, And I just can't wait to see what you're going to do in and through your church. We love you. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.